presentation is about the cultural differences between three countries, in this case, China, Colombia, and Mexico. Even these countries seem very different from each other, we found after taking a closer look that they have many things in common. Um, our team members are Helen, Cecilia, see, that probably means no, they're not gonna do it. So you should quickly realize and, between, and read between the lines and understand what they're trying to tell you. Another stereotype is that Colombians are really polite people, and that's true. We um, highly value politeness and good manners and proper behavior. So when you're gonna go and do business with Colombian people, those, these are some of the things that you should, you should take into consideration. For instance, when you're gonna go in a meeting, you should shake hands with everyone when entering and leaving the room. Also, you should address the people by their title, such as doctor or Mr. and Mrs., and never just say the name, because that would imply that you have another type of relationship other than work. Uh, body language is really important to smile, always having a smile that will make Colombians very comfortable, and I like, feel like they have things in common. And always maintain eye contact during any negotiation, otherwise you will give a bad impression. Body language, uh, corporate culture, so Colombians are normally on time, but you can expect Colombians to be 30 minutes late, and that's okay for us. But if you're foreigners doing business in Colombia, then you should not be on, you should be on time. If you are late, that's um, When they say, when Colombians say it in an hour or two, that can mean tomorrow or in a week, so don't take it personally. <coughs> But if they don't call you, you should follow up, and that's totally fine with us. <laughs> Colombians want to know you personally before doing any business. Uh, that's the reason is to see if you're a trustworthy person, and that can take many informal meetings before, for instance, signing a contract. Uh, in business negotiations, Colombian business are very hierarchical, so if you want something to get done, you shouldn't be meeting with the lower staff only the very high ranking people will take the decision. Colombians prefer to do business in Spanish, so making an effort to learn the language is gonna help you out. Uh, and that shows how interesting you are to enter the market. Colombians tend to leave everything to the last minute. So if you're working on a project, you should definitely be like calling them a week before just to make sure that everything is okay. When we talk about dressing, so Colombians pay a lot of attention to appearance and clothing, and I know it's no good, but they tend to judge people by the quality of their clothes. And they tend to look at the shoes first. I don't know why, but that's what they do. Uh, for women, women are just treated as another man in, in, in the business world, but you can expect men to make some comments and be flirtatious with women, so we as women, we just have to ignore them. Don't, don't pay attention. Um, and this is just like a, a summary, a collage of images about Colombia. So we have, for instance, Shakira. She was the, uh, the songwriter for the uh, World Cup FIFA 2010. Then we have Gabriel Garcia Marquez. He was the first Colombian to, to win a Nobel Prize in literature. We also have Sofia Vergara. She's very famous now in the US with the TV show Modern Family. And Colombians are crazy about soccer, um, beautiful women. So just I encourage you to go to Colombia. It's a very friendly country to go and visit. Now Ariadna is going to talk about Mexico. Thank you. I'm also going to talk about some positive and negative stereotypes <laughs> about Mexico. For example, violence and drugs. I mean, <clears throat> it's not like we're in a state of war and we can have normal lives. And it's the people that, that are criminals that, are, that get caught into that, so you shouldn't be worried about that. As for illegal immigrants, I promise I entered to China with a proper visa. <laughs> um, Mexicans only drink tequila and eat tacos. Well, it's a good promotion for national beverage, and guys would like that. And as for tacos, we also have <coughs> sopes and enchiladas and other dishes that are really, really good, so you should try them. I recommend it. Mexicans are hardworking people. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and Mexicans are family oriented. That's also true, and I'm going to talk about that later. As for our cultural aspects, Spanish is uh, our official language. As for our feature, uh, uh, physically, we're mestizos. 
that means that we are a mix of European and a mix of indigenous, native indigenous people. We are a high context and collectivist culture. That means that you will need to know our culture in order to understand what we are talking about. And you're also going to have to read between lines. And it's also hard for us to give a straight no answer. Family is a principal value for us. <coughs> for example, we had a course in Mexico where there were lots of people, half of them were Mexican, and like 35% were people from France, and then there were people from all over the world also. And we had to, we, we made groups, and the groups were people of their own nationalities. And every group from Mexico listed for their most important value, family, and people from France listed for their most important value, liberty, like every group listed liberty in France, every group in Mexico listed uh, family as their more, most important value, and a guy from <coughs> Australia listed as having a work that allowed him to have a life as his most important value for, for his country. And for trust and relationships are very important. Like for example, we went to the US to have a course about the North American Free Trade Agreement and we visited some companies. When we were there, an American company received us and the lady that gave us a conference about the NAFTA agreement went straight to business. She was talking on a very formal way, very formal and casual way at the same time. And she was like very schematic and gave lots of information. It was a really good conference. And then we went to a Mexican company and the first thing that they <coughs> did, give us a tour around the company. Then they took us to their corporate office and they took us to have food, Mexican food. And while, while we were eating, they were also talking about how they had built up their business. And when the meeting ended, I felt like I, like I was in a family, like I could trust them, and that that was a business I would go back because I could trust them. As for organizational culture, normally companies in Mexico are hierarchical and with high distance in power. That doesn't mean that you're not going to find self-empowered workers, but they're the less than most uncertainty avoidance and in a meeting you're going to have first informal conversation and then you're going to go to business. And for a dress code, Mexicans generally dress conservative and with suits and Mexican men are normally warm and friendly and they say hi like, like this. <laughs> so they'll feel uncomfortable if they touch you. And for signing contracts, it's different in every region. Like for example, Mm, there was this director of a company in a city in the north named Tijuana and he came back to my boss and told, and told her, I bought a building. She was like, okay, do you have a contract? And he takes off a napkin and says, what well, you told me that the thing that I needed was to agree on the thing and on the price. So here's the thing, here's the price, here are the signatures. So there's your contract, a napkin. So the thing is, in this city, the most important thing is word. But it's not like everywhere in Mexico. It's very important to have it clear in a contract because we have the uncertainty avoidance things. So now Cecilia is going to help us to talk about China. OK, uh, let's move to the part of China. I think all of you sitting here have a feeling of the culture of China. So. Uh, let me know if you will change a little bit on the below stereotype. The first, the China products fake and low quality. I think it happened in, uh, at the beginning of the reform and the opening, but it uh, also uh, teaches us that uh, it can bring us the repurchase and the loyalty. So currently, supply are focused on the quality. And the second, we are controlled by the government. Actually, uh, it depends on which, and we are improving a lot comparing to previous ones. So we need time to uh, uh, change step by step. And uh, three and four, uh, Kung Fu and Zen, they are more uh, classic uh, elements of the China culture, but uh, it uh, reflects that uh, we are used to uh, strengthening ourselves uh, both externally and internally. And uh, the last one, uh, good at math, actually I'm not. And <laughs> but it's also uh, reflected that the education method of China or more focus on the logic development rather than the creativity. And then we go to the uh, business uh, part. 
So uh, I still remember the video professor showed us uh, last time to talk about the China. And um, it's a uh, referred to the structure of the society. And of course, the family is the cell of the society. But uh, uh, more important, uh, our uh, credibility is based on the uh, acquaintance. Uh, it's not to uh, uh, talk about uh, the, we find uh, the shortcut, but actually um, we, we are humbleness. Humbleness to show that if I'm good, I, will not, I can't say I'm good, or to talk, about, uh, to talk a lot, demonstrate I'm a good. We need a third uh, person to uh, demonstrate he is a good guy. So that's why we need uh, acquaintances the key. And then, uh, basing on the acquaintance culture, we would like to uh, build guanxi when we do business. Uh, for example, if we would like to do business with company A, it would be better to find, uh, find a medium person who is acquainted with the head of the company A. Uh, and uh, with their arrangement, you will have the dinner, uh, dinner with the uh, head of the company A. So you will make friends. It's the first step to build the relationship. <coughs> and then you need to do a lot of things to maintain this relationship. Uh, with more details. But I think my uh, friends, Helen will give you more uh, of the tips on the relationship. Uh, thank you, Cecilia. So um, <coughs> just like Cecilia mentioned, the guanxi is so important in China. So um, here I would like to share some cultural aspect of doing business in China. Assume you are invited to a business dinner. How are you going to sit at the dinner? Uh, typically, the uh, dinner table is like a round table. And the master, host, uh, master will sit uh, on the top of the table, um, the host one. So the, um, the first important guest and the second important guest will sit next to the host one. Um, always remember that the right person is uh, uh, more important than the left person. So the host uh, two, he will sit opposite the host one. And uh, um, the guest three and the guest four, they will sit next to the host two. The rest of the seat will feel free to pick up by the rest of the guests and the hosts. Um, toast is a very common thing uh, during the dinner. So um, three tips I would like to share here. First is uh, always lower your glasses when you um, toast the wines with some senior or older people. And uh, use your finger to express your appreciation when people filling the wines for you. And uh, always treat the elder and the senior people first. Um, try to show your respect to these people. So to sum up our presentation today, three key cultural points um, that I would like to summarize here. First is about the high contest cultures. Um, in these three countries, people always like to, in, to express themselves in an indirect way and uh, always like to build a good relationship before business starts and always sh show respect to the senior people. Um, so that's <laughs> all for my today. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> okay, group number six.